This is Toronto Today, a far cry from an encampment 200 years ago called simply York. Basically a, a clearing with a few scattered houses, mostly out of wood. Uh, smoke coming out of the chimneys from the fires that they would have had going. And once you got outside of, well, north of Queen Street, basically, you were into virgin territory. I mean, it was countryside with a, with a settler every once in a while working on a farm. Uh, impossible to imagine today, but uh, it would have been an interesting place. Interesting, but muddy. A rather smelly upstart of a town that yearned to be a city someday. The name Toronto goes back even further. Toronto was an Aboriginal word that meant where the sticks were in the water or where fishing weirs were. Some people think it was the carrying place, and we now know that that's probably not the case. Um, in 1793, when Simcoe christened the town, he changed the name from the Aboriginal name to York, named after the Duke of York and his victory over the French at Flanders. John Graves Simcoe selected the Toronto area because it was a defensible harbor and it made the perfect location for the capital, the new capital of the province of Upper Canada. Simcoe, the Queen's envoy to the struggling community of loyalists and the first Lieutenant Governor of Upper Canada, arrived in the summer of 1793 at a lonely outpost called Fort Rouet. And it was a very small fort, a fortified trading post is really what it was. Um, and there was a small contingent of um, French soldiers and civilians there whose job it was to establish a French presence here and also to trade with native peoples. So the French um, were here in Toronto in the 1750s, a good 40 years before uh, John Graves Simcoe arrived. They abandoned the place in 1759 or 1760 and it wasn't reoccupied by Europeans until the 1790s. John Graves Simcoe gave out a huge land grants of one or two hundred acres, sometimes much more, to uh, people who were his government officials, to people who had fought on the British side during the American Revolution, and people that he felt could manage the land well. He gave John Scatting 253 acres of land on the east side of the Don River, where the Queen Street Bridge crosses the Don. You can see a plaque there today. Scadding was an old friend of Simcoe. He'd managed the Lieutenant Governor's estate in Devon. His cabin survives, preserved behind the CNE's band shell, opposite the Fort Rouet Monument. It was moved by the York Pioneer and Historical Society in 1879 to be part of the first exhibition. This was the first example of architectural preservation. It was set up to be our first museum of sorts in the area to show future generations what the pioneers went through. For more information, visit our website on topoftheworld.net.